phone and then you don't have to remember the hex code. So anywhere that you use a hex code that you like, you want to write that down somewhere because that's the color and it will go across all platforms. And then to add that color, you just hit the plus sign and it's there from now on. You don't have to go back in there and add your colors or anything like that. So I'm going to go back to white and hit apply. So again, to get the, the shape and the background color, it's edit project settings. Okay, so now that you have that, I always like to go and get my jiffies because I know that I'm going to have some fun stuff in there. So I'll go over to jiffy.com and I think I want a smiling dog face. So I right click and save image to downloads. It may be a little bit different in Windows. I don't know. Is it? Okay. Okay, and notice I just right clicked on this one and it says download linked file or linked file as. You don't want that. Um, this only happens on jiffy.com. So what I do is I clear that out, right click again, and now I've got save image to downloads. Okay, so if you ever see where it doesn't give you that option, just click off of it, go back over, and you can uh, get that link. Okay. Now, the reason I wanted to get those with you guys here is I'm going to show you how to add content. Now, you can uh, add a logo. I've got a logo here for the Fast 45, so if you have a logo, get it downloaded. I have a video we're going to use, and then I'm going to click this plus sign to import media. And then there's my jiffies, so I'm going to grab those and import. Okay, so now I have all I need. I'm going to get rid of this one. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the video itself down to track one. Now, if you use Big View, you'll probably want to cut off the very first part of the video because it's just you standing there. Um, but it can be hard to see. It's such a small space down there. You might accidentally cut off part of, uh, you know, what you're saying. So this right here, the, the minus and the plus, I'm just going to make this a tad bigger so that it makes down here a little bit bigger for me. And then I can see this right here is dead space. So I'm going to drag this over where I don't look like an idiot. Okay? Because I don't like to look like an idiot whenever I'm... Dead space, you mean that because it was black? Yes. And then I'm going to go up to edit and split. And you'll use that a lot. Um, you may have to take out a section in the middle of your video uh, or at the end. And so then you'll see over here, I've also got nothing. So I'm going to drag this line over and then, and notice I clicked on it to make it uh, yellow. Uh, because if you don't click on what you're going to split, it'll just ask you to split all. And so when you have more than one thing on here, um, you don't want to necessarily split all. Uh, so just whatever you're working on, you always want to highlight. Now I need to take this track and drag it to the front to where it's lined up. Because when it renders, if you don't drag it over, it will have a blank space too. Okay, so now we've got all of that. Now, I'm going to show you a couple things I want to do. I want to get this video where I have some space down here for my progress bar, and then I have some space up here for my call out. So I'm going to just grab one of these little dots, and I think I like that size, and I'm going to grab this one, and I'm going to get me centered if I'm not ready. It says I am. But if you're OCD like me, you probably do not like this stuff on this side. So this right here is your crop. I'm going to click it. Notice how it changed to blue, and I'm going to drag it over to the side. And I also don't want this space up here above my head. See, these are things to look at because you want it to be pleasing and look polished, but not too polished, but, you know, those small details. So when I do that, I have to come back over and click on this arrow 
to get out of the cropping and now I'm going to drag it even more up here. By the way, that's my cat that I had a local artist paint because I'm obsessed with my cat. Okay, his name's Joseph, by the way. Now, after I do that, normally my um, pictures are black and white, but I'll probably leave this, um, this one alone for today. But let me show you what happens if you decide to go to black and white. So up here at Modify, you can go down to Effects and then Visual Effects. Go over to color adjustment, and let me show you, because this freaked me out the first time this happened. That's what happened. So it's way too bright, the contrast is way too much. And so you'll see though that it opened this window over here where you can adjust that. So I'm gonna drag the contrast over quite a bit, and now I'm gonna drag the brightness, and then I'm gonna get a little bit more contrast a little bit more brightness, and then you can do black and white. But I'm not gonna do that for today. I just wanted to show you that little um, weird thing that happens if you try to do black and white videos. Okay, so the next thing is we're gonna get what's called your progress bar that will go across the bottom. The progress bar is one of the most ingenious things you can do because people feel a need to finish the video just to watch the bar go across. So what you're gonna do is go over to annotations. I know it sounds weird, but that's where we're gonna grab our box. And you'll notice we've got some that have uh, no background at all. And then this one right here, that's the white and the black. That's the one we want because we need one that has color and that's rectangular. So I'm gonna grab it and drag it to track two. Then what I'm gonna do Okay, so Alyssa says in Windows computers, you have to right click and then what, add to timeline at Playhead? Yes. Okay, and I'm gonna get this fixed for you guys too, like we were discussing. Okay, so down here on the track, I'm gonna grab the end of it and get all the way to the end of the video and notice I get that line when I do that. And then I obviously don't want my progress bar right here, nor do I want text. So I'm gonna drag it down to the bottom. I'm gonna drag the end. I'm gonna double click on the text and hit delete. And then I'm gonna drag this top one and notice I get the yellow bar when it's lined up with the video. Okay, now I wanna um, change my color. So up here, we've got where we're working with the... the it's okay. Uh, these are your visual properties. This is your text, if we had any text, and this is the box itself. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my teal color. So now it's teal. Now, red is a really good one. So if you, you know, if it's like a really important video or it's for your ad, use red because red is action. And uh, so even if it's not branded, Red is really captivating for people, and it's like, hey, take some action here. All right, so now, how do we get it to where it's not across there the whole time? This is where you go to transitions. And so it's in transitions that we're going to have, I believe it's slide left. So I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to drag it on top of my bar. And then, is it slide left or slide right? Might be slide right. I sucked at geometry. And directions. Let me go to slide left. I mean, right. There you go. Okay, notice these three little bars right here. I'm going to drag this, oh, all the way to the end of my call out. So now the red line disappears completely. Okay, so let me show you what happens. See? So it's going all the way across. Now you can see right here, it's overlapping my video a little bit, and I don't like that. So I'm going to take it up. There we go. And so as you go across, look at that line. Now you can um, have it where it's thicker, thinner, it doesn't matter. But let me show you something I like to do with it, and that is the fill style. I'll go from solid to gradient. And so what gradient does is it just makes it look richer. 
it has like a, a 3D effect. It doesn't look so 2D to me. And then also you can have an outline color. So I don't know if you notice it, but there's a teal color right here. I really don't want that. So I'm just gonna go over to the red, but it is handy for other um, purposes. Okay, so let me get this back up here so we have some room to see track three. Uh, Alyssa, on making this video smaller so you can see all of it, what do you do in Windows? With me, oh, I bet you could just go right here, duh, to the percentages or fit. I bet will work. I just do um, a scroll on my Mac, and I know that um, a lot of um, y'all's uh, Windows-based computers won't do that. Okay, now the other thing that will capture the attention of the person watching your videos either on your Facebook or as the ad is having some type of wording right here. So we're going to go back over to annotations. And this time I'm going to pick one of them that does not have a color background. Now you can have a color background, but I usually like my stuff very, very clean. So I'm going to grab it and I'm going to drag it to track three. And then the same thing, I'm going to drag it all the way to the end of my video. Now, you don't have to have the exact same text all the way through. You can like have it play for part and then add another piece here with different text and then another piece at the end. Um, for, simplic oops. for simplicity's sake, we're just going to do the exact same thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type stop the scroll. And then I'm going to drag it up here. I'm going to pull these out and then I'm going to go up with it to where it's aligned. Now, obviously you can't see it. So this is where we're going to change. We can change the font. We can change the colors. I like thick because I want them to stop scrolling. So I'm going to go with day poster black and then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go with black. Now, it's a little too close to the edges for me, so I'm, I'm going to make it smaller. Now notice, I want to go to like 92 or 90. Notice it's not on here. I'm just going to type 92. Nope, I still want it a little bit smaller. So now I'm going to type 90, and I think that will work. Okay, now here's what's fun. We're all like little kids. I know we act like adults, but we're like little kids on the inside. And I can tell you that if you have some fun movement and stuff with it, you'll get people's attention even more. So I'm going to go over here to behaviors. And one of my favorites is pulsating. So I'm going to grab it and drag it on top of my text. Now, watch what happens. We'll finish up the nitty gritty. See how it's pulsating? So you've got the pulsating, you've got the bar across here, and you've got people like, stop the scroll, why should I stop the scroll? And then we're going to add your closed captioning and that'll seal the deal. Didn't I was doing the behaviors, it actually made the box be the one that was moving and not the words. How do you you might have dragged it, well, because you used, if you go over to annotations, you used one that has color and you need an annotation that has no color. You're welcome. Okay, so the final cherry on top. Now, I'm not going to do this whole video because I want to get to your copy. Uh, is the closed captioning. People will start your video with no sound, guys. And so to not have closed captioning, it's just not a good idea. So I had to click more and then audio effects. Uh, you may see that you have to do that as well. But here's the captions, and this is why I love Camtasia, and I will not use anything else for this type of video. I'm going to drag it down to on top of the video itself. Now, one thing I forgot to show you, see how all my sound lines are down at the bottom? I don't like that, so I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to get them to where they touch the top of this green line right here, and that way there's better sound, okay? All right, now this is all you do. I hate listening to myself, but I am going to take a hit for the team so that I can demonstrate this for you guys. Actually, can I mute it? Well, I bet probably shouldn't. Okay, so you just click. Whenever I did the captions, notice these squares showed up. So when you click one, this Wednesday we'll finish up the nitty gritty of content creation.
Mm-hmm. But it's so easy. And that's and like you don't want your video to be longer than 60 seconds anyway. It literally takes me just a couple minutes. So, uh, and I will usually watch the video and make sure I don't have any misspelled words or, you know, for people that are grammar police, you better make sure you have apostrophe, R-E when needed, things like that. So you, because there are some people, especially the C personalities, that they will see that and they won't want to do business with you because if you can't spell, why should they do business, you know, or whatever it is. So you want to make sure, and then I'll just click the next one. Now notice that it capitalized my four, and this is what I wanted to show you because it's a continuation of the other sentence. I don't like that it does this. I don't know if it if this is a Mac thing or if it does it on yours. But what I'm going to do is click over there and make it small, and then we'll do one more. It's October for launching the ad. Normally we take off in November. And if you if it doesn't finish a word in this section, it's okay. It doesn't matter. It all goes together anyway. Okay, so I know I missed something though. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this ad or this square. This Wednesday will finish up the nitty gritty of content creation in our Facebook ad series. That will leave us with a final class. See how I messed up some stuff? It's October for launching the ad. Normally we take off in November. Okay, so I'll show you what happens. So you just continue on to the end and then here we have, Big results oops. This Wednesday, we'll finish up the nitty gritty of content creation in our Facebook ad series. That will leave us with a final class in October for launching the ad. Normally we take off in November, December, so I- Okay, so in this October one, I would need to add in. Normally we take off and that's it. Now you can change the colors and things like that for your um, your closed captioning. Now um, Alyssa said you have to right click. Um, my computer anyway, it has a, you know how you have audio effects, cursor effects? Yeah. Right there is where there's a spot captions. Okay. So you have to click. So over right. here there's a, uh, it says captions and then you right click captions on Windows based computers. Okay. All right, now this little uh, tool right here, you can click import. So if you have your script in text in a text document, you can import that for your captions instead of having to type. I was going to ask. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it looked like we were doing double work. Yep. But I was waiting. A lot of times I don't have a script. Okay. So, and then caption settings is where you can change your font, your text color, your background color to any color you want. The size, all of that. This video, do a video in big view, and then just transfer it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll do my video in big view, and then I'll airdrop it to my Mac, import it in here. And then the script is already there. Mm -hmm. And then you can grab that script. Yep. Now, uh, whenever you want to add your Jiffy, so it'd be like wherever you want uh, to put them, and you would just drag and drop them wherever you want. So I would, you know, maybe put one, oops, right here. They need to be longer than a split second. So a lot of times if they're at like one to two seconds long, I'll just put several of the same jiffy right here and it looks the same. Okay. Um, and so whenever people are watching it, notice how small he is. So we don't want that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab again, and I want him to be on the entire video. So now I'm going to have to do some cropping. And so what will happen is... Launching the ad. Normally we take off in November and December, so I highly recommend... <laughs> yeah. So people love funny. And um, I should have added him. I was just in a hurry and didn't add any jiffies. So you can intersperse it, you know, throughout your video. And then once you have all of this done, um, usually I'll have a, a slide. So I recommend 
at the end, and you can add music. I mean, I usually have music on mine, uh, but I usually do have a slide that I add to the end of my uh, videos for like my business or, or a freemium or something that I'm offering. So you just drag it down here. And whenever it gets to the end, I'll usually shorten it just a little bit. Um, they'll see this. Okay. So uh, usually for my clients, I'll have like their picture, you know, with like general insurance agency, it has a staff picture and then their website, something like that so that people can see your information at the end of it. So I always recommend that you create this ad and I do all of them in Canva. Once you're done getting your ad, adding your music, all of that stuff, you want to click share. And then local file. Is it a little different on yours, Alyssa? I can't answer that. I just did it 16 different times, so I finally found it. OK. So uh, you want to save it as a local file. I will name the video. So I'll say fast 45 September. And then notice it's going to put it in downloads. And so I'll go to the proper you know, folder, click export, and then it'll export it over. So. Um, Again, we'll get the instructions for um, those of you that have a Windows-based computer. We'll get that updated. I'll get that emailed to everybody. And, um, and again, if you haven't, don't spend five hours. Seriously, uh, call me. I don't mind at all. Call me, email me. Um, I will help you. But don't spend five hours trying to figure it out, OK? Now, any questions on this? OK. Yes, that's a good question. So um, over in Camtasia, it's under File and then Save, OK? And then, I, I mean, I've got several. And, and what's neat about this is once you have all this laid out, you just delete the old video, put the new in. Delete the old jiffies, put the new in. Uh, keep the, the call out and just change the text. Change the behavior, OK? So like if you want to change the behavior, you click this little up arrow. And there's the behavior right there. It's the drop or the pulsating. And I would just delete it and then drag and drop another. Uh, if you want to change the color of your, you know, your box, then you just um, go right here. And you can change the color. So wherever you see arrows, things like that, that will let you go in there and change your, your stuff. Okay, and then always look over here on the right. If you don't see uh, any of this, like you may get in there and it's just like that, it's properties. That's how you'll get all of your stuff to come up so you can do the volume and all that. So just play around, but again, don't, I think Alyssa spent five hours and, She's and we do not want to do that. Just a random question. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I've never, yeah, I've never played around with that. I know it's got a lot of stuff you can do, but I have no idea. Okay, so uh, your copy. This is what we're going to finish with uh, today. I did put these guidelines on your paper, but when you're doing copy, here's one thing to remember, and you may want to write it down. You want to write as if you're sitting across from your friend talking. Okay? So use I instead of we when you can. Use you, not they, he, or she. I think your friend would probably think it was weird if you were referring to them he or she or they. Uh, so it's just like you're talking to one person personally. Uh, use a client story or your own story somewhere on your website or in your blogs, things like that. Everybody loves stories. In fact, uh, fMRIs have shown that we literally get on the same wavelength. So this is really good for networking. If you have, like I have what's called a story toolbox where I keep different stories and I try to get them intertwined into conversation at networking events uh, if they're obviously relevant. If they're not relevant, people are just going to think you're weird. But if, if they can get in there, uh, humor, some interesting things, stuff like that, uh, you literally, it's one of the most powerful ways to build rapport is sharing stories. You can even ask people, well, what's your story? Why are you here today? Because everybody likes to talk about themselves unless they're introverted. Uh, testimonials. 
And then we've talked about this, sell benefits that tap into emotion. I'm not going to get into that uh, today, but you need to research the three benefits, which I gave the questions in some earlier trainings. Oh, no, I didn't. Here they are now. Okay, so <laughs> I do this for every client uh, because I want to find a pattern of why people do business with you or, um, Steve, in your case, would be volunteer, and you'll usually get the same thing. So the first question is, why do they do business with you, number one? Number two, what three benefits do they get from you? And that's usually tied into emotion. So it's not the product or service, it's the benefit. So I'm a customer of Glass Doctor. I like the customer service. They're, uh, they, they just know what they're doing. So that's a trust. I can trust them. They're fast and they're accommodating. Uh, so those are an example of benefits. And then how do they feel when they do business with you? You might think that's the same, but it's not. Uh, usually I get a different um answer for that and I would highly suggest guys that you do this if you have not already because we will take that data and brand everything it'll be in your copy it'll be it needs to be on your website in fact uh, for American Heritage we came up with their tag which is we take banking personal because everybody said I feel like when I walk in there, they personally know me. It's not business. They know my voice. They know me before, uh, you know, me before they even know my name. They just, they know me. And so that's what we want to do is why do people do business with you? Bring that to the next class because I use that in all of my stuff. Okay, here's what I was talking about. Um, download and study ispeaksocial.com's ultimate ads swipe file that's what you need ultimate ads swipe file and study the examples to start writing your draft copy uh, and uh, uh, for your your ad so um, again you kind of need to do your research uh, I recommend interviewing at least eight of your fans okay eight of your fans get that data get this swipe file again if you don't want to give her your email which you can uns unsubscribe if you need to but you can email me and I'll shoot that over to you or text me okay so um, here are some examples and this is uh, in um, you know will be in the video but uh, I may even send you over my slides um, can someone write down to shoot me an email or text me? Can, can you text me to uh, uh, include the slides of this training? Uh, that way you guys can really study this and it's not a video. So uh, this right here over on the right is I Speak Socials. And notice those little stop signs at the top. Those are great. Stop signs or X's. And she says, say goodbye to expensive ads that flop. Say goodbye to confusing tech tutorials. And say goodbye to another 40-hour course that goes nowhere. Instead, say hello to. So what is she doing? She has done her research. She knows that those are the top three problems her target market encounters. Okay? So she's like, say goodbye to all of that and say hello to this. And that's what I use that for the text for um, the waters group, except I use squares and uh, or uh, X's. And I said, say goodbye to realtors that disappear off the face of the planet after listing your home. You know, something like that. Say goodbye to, you know, they just want the commission check instead of actually helping. We just basically took whatever people complain the most about and said, say goodbye to that, and then say hello to, and I introduced each member of her group, and we got really good engagement from that. And it only cost her 13 bucks to run that ad for that engagement instead of the 70, which shocked us. Okay, so notice how interspersed, you'll see like some emojis throughout there. It's not overdone, so on both sides, I've lost my, my, uh, my cursor but you'll notice you've got like what three to four maybe at the most ten uh, and also notice on Jenna Kutcher's on the left not just another tool telling you how to grow your following so she has it in all caps 
You can do something like X's, you know, stop the scroll if you don't want it in your video or if you're using a graphic instead. Uh, and then again, she's going into the pain points and how she's going to help you leave that pain and do what you want to do. And so this is a, a great example of some copy to study. Jenna Kutcher, I Speak Social, um, Tony Robbins, uh, Amy Porterfield, all of them are masters at it, Marie uh, Forleo. And then uh, I Speak Social does this where a lot of them don't. At the bottom where it says seating is limited, click below to save your spot to the live masterclass. She creates scarcity, seating is limited. So it might be like only open for three days or seating is limited or, you know, reserve your spot before they run out. Whatever you can put in there to have a sense of urgency. But then she puts the links in there that you can click as well as down at the bottom where it says uh, learn more on Jenna Kutcher's. So those links in the copy and at the bottom will be the same, but I do recommend having that link in your copy, not just the learn more, the download or sign up button that's down at the bottom. And notice they're totally different. Like you would think where the stop sign over on the, the right would be boring. That's one of her best producing ads. And then the other one doesn't even have a picture of a face. It's just bright enough <laughs> where Whenever you're scrolling, it'll stop you, okay? Another one, um, Allie, and it sounds like Bee Jerk, but I know that's not her name. Bee Jerk, maybe? Um, oh, let me go back here. 80% of your ads will be uh, viewed on mobile, so you need to have the most attention grabbing copy at the top before the see more. Okay, notice how long hers is. This is a, a screenshot of her entire ad copy. Um, so you can go long too. Uh, you have to play around, which will work best, but she asks questions. What if your business was booked out just by showing up for three and a half minutes each day? What? Now I want to read more. Like, how can you literally just show up for three and a half minutes? So the main point though is it evokes curiosity. How can you do that? Because everybody needs more time and sometimes long works. Again, she's got some emojis. And then she's got her face. I would have never have thought of doing a black and white photo, to be honest, but it works, okay? And then also notice under the picture where it has uh, the heading, I'm gonna show you guys how to do all of that, but it says 365 days of live streams planning calendar. Uh, numbers, uh, anything like that you can put numbers in works. So if you're like, you know, four tips to grow your email list times a thousand, you know, something like that. Uh, these are two, the one over on the left is mine. This one literally did better than I thought it would because to me it just seemed kind of boring, but it has the six unusual steps to irresistible marketing because no one thinks about that. Get your free, notice it's all caps, guide. Um, and then the, my copy consists of this one thing ended years of frustration of trying to d grow my dang email list. When I did this, I grew my email list five times over. Click below to grab your copy. And then down at the bottom, I use the words exactly how I five times my email list in two months. Okay, so all of those things, people want to do that. Um, so short and sweet will work too. Uh, you always want a call to action button. So we've got the get directions, the learn more. If you, like this one over here for K-Bobs did really well. Um, we got, I was literally in the restaurant. Can I take a picture of you guys for an ad for the half off kids meal? And um, the guy on the end that has a face like, I don't know what we're doing here, but okay. But the kid, look at that little guy in the front. Oh my gosh, he like, you know, sold the ad. So again, um, you know, having that information on there, having the all caps of the words you really want to emphasize. You can use your face, not use your face, have pictures, not have pictures, use black and white, use color. I mean, 
play around, but it needs to be bright. You need to have numbers. You need to have scarcity. You need to have emojis and you need to play around. Okay. I'll often put emojis down at the bottom where it says kids eat half off per adult entree. A lot of times I'll have an emoji there. Like you could literally have a hand pointing to the call out button of get directions. This one also got really good um, results. Can I ask you a question? Most people are like, yeah, sure. And then it's, is it really possible to be an introvert and good at sales? You might be thinking I'm not in sales, but if you're an entrepreneur, you have to be able to sell, right? I found out. And then they have to click more. Well, what did she find out? So it just, it provoked people to read more. Notice I have stop the scroll. I've got me, I've got my closed captioning. And then down at the uh, bottom, it says learn how I persuade as an introvert uh, minus awkward and. So I used an emoji there, okay? So stop the scroll is actually very effective in your, your copy or on your video. How do you add the more? It adds it automatically. So when you go past a certain amount of characters, it'll add it. So whenever you are creating your ad, which again, I'll show you in October, it'll show you a preview on the mobile on the right hand side, and you'll see what will show up without having to click the more. And that's where you want the most important text. Okay. And then you can decide, is this really going to grab their attention or not? But that swipe file I recommend getting guys, it'll show you examples of all of this. Now, um, with the videos and closed captioning, a lot of times Facebook will be fussy about that and say it has too much text. Remember, we went over a graphic to make sure it didn't have too much text because they only allow 20% uh, last month. Well, even though it's a video, the closed captioning makes it more than 20%. So usually they'll deny my ad the first time. I appeal it because it's a video and then I get approved, just so you know. Okay, use these questions, and I don't think I have this in your notes, uh, to create your copy. Number one, why should they take action now? Okay, good. Why should they take action now? Why should they care? What are you giving them that will benefit them right now? now it has to be valuable guys and then what's your call to action do you want them to download you call you message you click learn more to grab your opt-in i uh, know that if you set up an ad for them to message you uh it will cost you more okay because it is more expensive for that so why right now or why should they take action? Why should they care? What are you giving them that will benefit them? And then what is your call to action? Okay, so um, okay, so we've got about uh, nine minutes. So what I would like to do is since there's not as many of us, which is kind of neat because we can uh, talk a little bit. Um, for are you? I'm sure you're representing Sandra, the um, small business development. So, what could be an ad or an ad idea? Like, what what do you think could be a couple options, and maybe we can give you some feedback for getting some new clients. Well, actually, we have a QuickBooks seminar coming up. Okay. So what, okay, but so before you continue, for those of you that have had to use financial software, what is a pain point? <laughs> oh, so you, his wife to do it. <laughs> okay, so have any of y'all used financial software? Okay, so what was a pain point? Okay, so that could be a pain point. Uh, anybody else? Mine was. Starting up and setting up. That's what I was about to say. Setting it up. I mean, how do you know what questions to answer, how to answer them, all that? And I think the mere intimidation factor or the time it takes uh, could also be a pain point. Like, there's no way I'll just have someone else, you know, do it. Well, you need to be able to track your own finances and it helps your accountant. So then it could be like, what if in our seminar you could walk away, you know, 
uh, not being intimidated, knowing how exactly to set it up, and how to customize your reports, et cetera, et cetera. So whatever people are wanting. So those might be some pain points, but you may, um, if you know of a couple businesses that use QuickBooks, ask them what were some of the pain points or are they experiencing any now? I know for me, it was setting it up because I was so nervous of answering the questions wrong that I was afraid it'd give me all the wrong categories and what about the government? Like, will I get in trouble if I have the wrong answer? And how do I set my CRS tax percentage in there? I mean, there, you know, it was just a little, and I have owned a computer training business since 1998 and I was still intimidated by it. Business is different. Like, I, yeah, that's what throws me off. Yeah, and that may be um, something that you could push is that uh, this will be for all businesses, you know, like, it's not a one size fits all, but we will teach it in a way where you can use it no matter your business. So, um, and then what do you think of a graphic? I mean, would it be you talking and explaining what you're going to do? Would it be um, a person, you know, person in front of their computer with all these papers all over the place pulling their hair, you know? Um, Mm-hmm. And then having your text on there. I would. If you have the text exactly on there, I think it's. And, I w- and, you know, full disclosure, we can't do ads. Okay. So, okay. But just the graphic. We can't do Facebook ads. Facebook ads. But you can do posts. Yes. And we also still do like an announcement. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why can't you do Facebook ads? Yeah, but don't they want people to come there? You know what, Cherry, there are some just interesting <laughs> rules, and that is really a, that's the best answer I can give you. Well, I'm just going to move on because I got some opinions. Okay, what about uh, what you're up to? Well, let me let me give y'all some a, a suggestion. So I live by the motto: "What is the one thing I can do right now that will get me closer to my professional, financial, or personal goals?" Okay, so then we're gonna go off giving. Okay. Okay, so one of the, I think, pain points as a business owner is being asked to give all the time. So you you definitely want to be real, um, not crafty, what's the word, shrewd, smart in how you do it. So one of the things I would suggest is if you can find a business owner that has given, have them do a short 30-second, this is what it has meant to me to give to United Way, and then maybe have another person that received help from United Way <laughs> as the same video Okay. Yeah, we have videos that have the same thing. We have like a whole video that we show clients when we go out and do it, but it's a longer video than 60 seconds. I would get someone locally though. <laughs> if you're, if, okay, good. Then maybe shorten it, edit it out, okay. find someone else. If you've used it before, maybe, you know, do something different. Maybe get a picture of the person and put their quote on the ad. Yeah. Um, and then in your copy, oh my gosh, reviews, testimonials, a story. Um, from someone that was helped, it's golden. Uh, but, you know, like a lot of the United Way and stuff, you know, it shows like disaster and it shows, you know, it really grabs the emotions. I, th- I think it's brilliant that you already have a video where it tells how a person was impacted. Um, I'm just thinking, I hear saying that they want to find more businesses where they can go and give the presentation. I know that usually means one of you going and doing it. Mm-hmm. That means they got to shut down work, gather all the employees and do that. It's like, what if they had a, a video presentation that was easily dissimulated to all, everybody's phone, okay. and then they would That's have to get good. everybody in together. That could be an opt-in. Mm-hmm. So you could actually, you know, send it through an email and send them a link for anybody that's interested in that. Um, the main thing, though, is making sure they watch it. 
Yeah. Yeah. But it could give you an opening to follow up. You know, it was it would be almost an interesting one is where you have like a slideshow of that line of everything you do. So you do this, and then bam, it goes to the next slide. You do this, bam, it goes to the next slide, and then it fast forwards, and your copy says, "We literally help this many people, this amount of money each year, or whatever it is," and like break down all of that. Um, we may have to kind of look at some of your stuff and play around, but. Um, That's good. I'm mm-hmm. a social media calendar, <laughs> and so there's so many different sections that you go through. So each day is a section. I love it. Two one one is a section. You success is a section. You know, and on and on and on. And what Alyssa is suggesting too is a good idea because you could literally pinpoint, let's say, the four areas that you really want to grow. So if it's donations, you would have an ad for that. Letting ladies know that the, you have professional clothing, that would be another ad, and that would be a great one for someone, like even a behind the scenes where someone shows up and y'all are helping them pick some clothing, and then how do they feel after? I mean, a behind the scenes would probably do really good too. But you could alternate those ads. You know what I mean? So having several ads, actually, and then alternating them is a good idea, too. All right, Alyssa, Curry County title and abstract. Not the most, you know, exciting work, but your videos get watched more than any of my other clients. So congrats. Um, What do you think could be an ad? I'm having a hard time with that. I don't know. We can't give anything away. No, that's fine. Yes. <laughs> the darn government people. Um, yeah, I've been telling them how we benefit them, which I. That's good. And using the three benefits that we've discussed, yeah. um, we're going to do a, a slide for uh, the Waters Group where it's just all their closings. And at the end, we'll put your next or something like that. You know? So what do y'all, do y'all have any suggestions for her as a title company? Because she could go with realtors targeting them and potential customers that will insist to the realtor that we use Curry County. So what are some ideas you guys have for her? I honestly don't know much about, like, what. You go through closing. Yeah, Yeah. so when you purchase a property, they're the closing. I went there, but I don't know. I don't really know what their, you know, what's the difference between they're just people we call the people. Like, you know, I don't really know much about what they did. I just know I showed up at the office, signed a bunch of paper, and that was it. So. Yeah, and she's got a video on that. Yeah, Curry County title. Yeah, I think my, my main point when I went to title companies was all the paperwork. And I know you have to because of government, but somehow, you know, making that easier. How you can play it up. But mm-hmm. that's just a pain point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There is a lot of paperwork. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you could fix that, but I know one of the things that we really push with them when we were going over the benefits was uh, nothing falling through the cracks because everybody has a horror story um, almost of going to closing and, oh, they didn't have that ready, so now your closing is pushed to the next week. Or, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't make a copy of that. <laughs> yeah, but still, I mean, there's checkpoints somewhere um that you know people can know that you'll try your best to make sure nothing it's not delayed that's not delayed um so pain point i think is a good idea anybody else and maybe like i don't know for instance if you're gonna start targeting my audience just in case i'm the one coming up but like i don't know when i i'm right now looking at trying to buy a house and like maybe you should target like it's not so scary to buy a house all this stuff is not so scary because like a lot of people are like it's too there's too much mm-hmm. like I don't want to buy a house because it's too much 
That's a good idea. Oh, you could use a haunted house. Oh, Steve, that's a good idea because she loves Halloween. There it is. We're gonna have. To, we're doing that totally. We could totally. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm gonna have to get my camera. We're gonna. Oh my gosh, we're gonna have so much fun. Uh, home buyer's checklist kind of deal where you know you supply and sell to just like oh I I don't know what am I supposed to look at. You know, yeah. Now, are you a millennial? Are you between 25 and 35? Okay. Uh, yeah, that might be a good idea to target the millennials. Okay, so haunted house theme. We're going to totally do that. Maybe we could have you, you know, scared. She's a YouTuber, so. <laughs> That's good. All right, Steve. Oh, we're a little late, so if you guys need to go, but we're going to work on your stuff, but he does Matt 25 work. Um, life skills. I'd be thinking is for our counseling services and stuff like that. Okay. A lot of people don't know that we have that available there. And yeah. What all we can do and different classes, parenting, anger management, all this stuff. I mean, yeah. That'd probably, be probably some testimonials. And I know y'all are leaving, but RV park? Well, it, well, it fluctuates, business does. So it just depends. I mean, right now we're slow, but of course we have us working on other things, but but we're picking it up, and it just depends on what's going on in Clovis, really. So, I, I think even maybe a video of the park itself, yeah. you know, or like next, testimonials. How do, you, how do you do that where it's, I don't know, not boring, you know, it's just going, I don't know. Short and sweet, yeah. fast. We could even do a boomerang on that. Well, I need your help. <laughs> home away from home. People yeah. in their thing, like with on a little flight, patio enjoying like beers and hanging out with yeah. the neighbor people. Yeah. Or, like, so or even a list of... like a community that they come in there and you're well, part yeah. of that community or something. And you, you could even like maybe do your ad around Dragon Maine yeah. and hook yourself up like we, you got you want to come to Dragon get, Maine. Like, a park for Halloween too. Like. That would be a great video. Yeah. Behind the scenes of you decorating it for Halloween. Well, Heart. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm really well, I know, but you know, the, the, the walking tells us right next door, so. Yeah, yeah. Well, you guys are definitely in the Halloween mode. What, do you, what are like pain points for like luxury goods? You know what I mean? Because they're not, it's not, it's not like a pain. Well, point. usually with luxury, it's not. Now you're going into aspiration of who people want to be. And so the question is, um, uh, let me actually get you the actual question because um, we dis discussed this in a previous Fast 45 and Silver jewelry. Front each character. <laughs> that would be a good. So it's like the only thing is kind of set yourself apart from everybody else kind of doing. Like well, and study well, yeah, brands well. <laughs> like, like Lexus. Uh, they're all about prestige. Um, they're also mysterious, so not everyone can have what they're selling. There's only a certain group, right. and so it's like you're pushing that not everyone can have this. And so um, that's part of it. Uh, if it is a, lu a luxury item, because when you say luxury, I'm thinking high end. Okay. Right. Like, so if it's you know, not it's high end. 400, not, now, now there are, there's like a, another company called uh, King Baby Studios out of like Hollywood and Beverly mm -hmm. Hills kind of area. Like I can get this, some of the same stuff they have for, you know what I mean? Like they're selling it for, they have a bracelet they sell for $1,600 that I can buy for 140 bucks. Not that I'm going right. to sell that same So thing. luxury without the luxury more, price? Yeah, kind of a little more. In you between? Know, you still want to have the exclusivity to some extent, but it's not. When you're doing stuff like that. Like, yeah. It's, it's like you have Hermes bags, which I was watching a thing where they talk about, you try to go in there and they're like, nope. And they're like, but I got $10,000. They're like, sorry. We have a waiting list. Yeah. And then it's like, have your, you know, and that goes, and it goes to Hermes. People who have purchased Hermes products before get pushed in front. Have you ever done Yes. It? Well, we have these other things. They sell you a bunch of other stuff. 
you want to buy a bag, and then yeah. you, when you buy it, then they're like, okay, we have red and white ones. Like, yeah, well, that's that's black. their it's branding. Like, red or black. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, that's you know, their branding. That then they're and then there's Coach, which is lower. You got right. Louis Vuitton. Well, they're creating. You know I mean? So you have different levels, I guess. So. Yeah, they're creating that culture of being exclusive to the point of. They are actually determining when and what you buy. I'm not trying to be that level. You right. I mean? So I'm you're more, definitely under. I'm more well, here's a question that I. Kind of okay. Level. Here's a question that I would have, um, uh, and and you probably need to download the story branding um, on my website. I have a story brand that I train did training up here, okay. and it. Well, actually, it's a six steps to irresistible marketing. So download that. And one of the questions for you was define an aspirational identity. In other words, here's the question. How would your customer want to be perceived by their friends? And that inform your ideas and your marketing around that question getting answered. Okay. And then start there. But we can talk some more. But download that six steps to uh, irresistible marketing, and it will literally guide you through the process. All right. Well, um, so next month it'll be October 23rd, I believe. I'm glad I said that at the beginning. 